Hi there, I'm largely unemployed, but you can just call me Miles. And if you've ever smoked a vape, you've probably spent a bit of time around these things. This is a single-use disposable tobacco product. Tobacco companies design these things to deliver nicotine without any of that nasty tar. However, it's not all upsides. The manufacturers of these products design them to be neither rechargeable nor refillable, meaning that once you've used up its contents, you've got to throw it away. Even partially reusable products like this one here, which has a charging port without a refilling port, don't really go far enough. Once you've charged up the battery a couple times, you've run out of the juice, and this is no longer a usable vape. So what if I told you that there was a way to not only recharge, but also refill these products, to completely refurbish them, save them from the landfill, and save your wallet from a couple of extra purchases? There is some upfront cost and some skills that you're going to need to acquire, but it's really not that difficult, and I'm going to walk you through every step of the process in this video. We'll start with a quick explanation of what these things look like inside, move on to how you can actually go about refurbishing them, and then do a comparison across various different brands. All that being said, this video is not really an indictment of these companies in particular, although I would like to see them change their practices. It's more of an indictment of the entire industry as a whole, and the culture of unnecessary consumerism that we've built up over the past few decades. But enough about that, let's get into how these things actually work. Alright, these are the vapes I have available to me for our demonstration today. As some of you may have guessed, I am South African and so obviously I only have access to the locally distributed ones, but many of these brands are international so these skills should carry across. Also, please excuse the state of my hands, I have recently started rock climbing and uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a rough week, I'm not gonna lie to you. Now to open these things up, we need to first make a few executive decisions. This Elf Bar one here and this Nova Bar are both made of a hard, rigid plastic. As you can see, a previous attempt to get in here has actually damaged it quite badly. Uh, and so these aren't really worth refurbishing. You're going to do so much damage to the exterior that you're going to end up kind of just destroying them and making them really unpleasant to use. That would not be advisable. Instead, we can strip these for their batteries, which I will show later. Our remaining vapes here are pretty much identical internally, but I'll be showing more of that in a bit. Uh, we have two large cylindrical ones, two small cylindrical ones, and a flat rectangular one. Since these ones are a little bit easier to deal with, I think we're going to start with the smaller ones. We have, they're both the same brand, they're just slightly different flavors, they are functionally identical internally. In order to uh, open these things, you're going to need two tools. A screwdriver and a pair of flat nose pliers. If you have long nose pliers those will work too, just make sure they've got enough surface area on the grips. In order to get it out we're going to place the pliers firmly over the base and slowly begin to twist and wiggle while pulling backwards. There we go. It will not come out that easily the very first time you do it, but after each refurbishment it just gets easier. The inside of the vape is incredibly simple, deceptively simple in fact. Uh, we've actually got another piece hiding inside here, let me just get it out, there we go. Uh, this is the body. It's just a steel frame in this case with a plastic nib. That's what you draw on. We have a filter to catch any uncombusted vape juice. You don't want that getting in your mouth. It's very gross. Uh, we have a little reservoir here that stores the vape juice with some wires leading into it. Those wires, if we are very gentle with them, always pull on wires very gently if you have to pull on them at all. Uh, these wires lead up to an element, this thing over here, which houses a steel coil. This is a fireproof sheath. Uh, we've got a little co a metal coil inside with a fireproof sheath around it with some cotton wicks coming out the side. These touch the edges of this uh, foam, it's more like a sponge than anything else, right? Of the sponge and uh, wick the juice towards the coil where it's atomized and sent off to your mouth, straight into your lungs. Here we have a 13400 four factor lithium ion cell. This thing is rated at 3.7 volts nominal with uh, 2.04 watt hours of charge storage capacity. It's a pretty beefy little guy. It's very slightly smaller than a AAA battery and these fetch a pretty decent price on eBay. Um, so even if you're not interested in actually reusing the vape, stripping out the batteries and selling them online is a pretty good way to recycle these things. Finally, this is connected to an airflow sensor at the base. This, in this case, it's glued onto the bottom. In some other models, it's actually loose. As you pull air through the vape, through the front here, this will turn on, close the circuit, dump a bunch of energy into that coil, which will heat up the juice and send it through into your mouth with the vape drawer. There's no fans, there's no pumps, it's completely analog. It's a very ingenious little system. All right, so now onto the refurbishment part of this video. This is much easier to do than you might think. In order to refill the tank, which is probably the easiest part, we're just going to grab ourselves some uh, vape juice, whatever flavor you prefer. I would recommend putting one in that uh, was in there before, otherwise you're gonna have some weird mixtures. I don't have any, uh, what was this? Uh, pink crystal, whatever that is. So instead we're going to put in glazed donut. Uh, all you need to do here is drip a little bit in the top. 
like so until it sort of saturates a ring like this and we're going to do that a couple of times you don't want to put in too much because then it won't burn properly and then all we're going to do is take a screwdriver and just press it into the edges to spread that juice down doing this for three or four minutes should see that it all sinks down to the bottom cool we're going to let that stand vertically over there for the moment so that it can drip down a little bit more the bottom of the sponge is still a little bit empty but I don't want to add too much because you can smother the element and then it doesn't work properly if it's completely submerged. Now onto the battery. This is probably the more difficult of the two things to refurbish, but it's not impossible. We are going to have to purchase some specialized equipment for it. Links to everything I show you in this video will be in the description below. Before we attempt to charge our battery, there are two very important things we have to do every single time. Number one is we have to inspect the battery. If we notice any swelling, any discoloration, any burning smell, which is kind of hard in these vape ones because I always just smell like vape. You do not use this battery. It is it is far damaged. This one's completely fine. There's no swelling. There's no there's no charring that I can see. The insulation's all intact. I'm happy with the way this one looks. Over here is a battery that is not looking so good. Let me pull that up onto camera here. It's a square one or a rectangular one rather from a vape of the same model as this guy over here, and uh, unfortunately. It's got quite a bit of sponginess to it. I don't know if you can see, but it feels like there's some gas building up inside there. This is probably good for another, I don't know, 20 cycles, but I would absolutely not risk it. Lithium batteries are a huge fire hazard, and so we need to dispose of this ethically and sustainably. In order to do so, we're going to pull out a load. You can attach this to pretty much any load, it doesn't matter. In this case, I'm going to attach it to a, uh, little, <laughs> a little LED circuit I made. It's literally an LED with a resistor. Voila, that's it. And we're going to set that to the side to discharge. It'll probably power that LED for like 10, 15 days before it actually dies, but that's okay. We're going to pop our filter back inside the housing so we don't lose it. Uh, if you want to refurbish this, if you feel like it's too full of juice, just rinse it under a tap, give it a good wash and let it dry completely. No water must be in the system before you, uh, before you put it back in here. Now that we've conducted our assessment and determined that it's safe, we can go ahead and get through this insulating tape. This tape is one use. Once you pull it off, do not put it back. You must buy some more. I'll link it in the description. It's the stuff over here. And uh, you apply a fresh layer each time. Because I'm in a bit of a rush here, I'm going to just quickly cut through the tape to expose the battery terminal. But in your case, I would suggest peeling it off completely. I'll be doing that off camera. There we go, safely exposed. Once again, this stuff is one use. We're going to pile that up and dispose of it in the waste. We don't want to be using that again. We remove this little rubber pad and there we go. There's our other battery terminal already sticking up and exposed. Now to actually charge the thing. In order to do that, we're going to have to use a little charging circuit. Here's the circuit I found on eBay. Again, this will be linked in the description below. It's very simple and I'm not a professional solderer. I'm completely self-taught, so this is a very bad job and I'm not gonna show you how to do that. If you wanna learn how to solder wires onto a circuit board, go watch someone who knows what they're doing. I'm barely able to not short this thing out. It's currently connected to a pair of alligator clips, negative to negative, positive to positive. You want to, short, you want to solder to the B plus and B negative uh, terminals that's going to be battery negative battery positive and your power comes in through a little micro USB The circuit is really nice as it has automatic charge protection once this battery gets up to a voltage of about 4.1 volts It'll shut off the charging circuit to prevent overloading in order to attach it It's exactly as simple as it sounds We attach the negative terminal to the negative terminal and the positive terminal to the positive terminal Remember to never ever ever trust the wire color you check your terminals on each connection. You don't want to run this thing backwards. It might short out. And a lithium fire is the last thing you want on your hands. Uh, on that note, don't put out lithium fires with water. Use sand, starve it of oxygen. Don't put water on it. It will only accelerate the reaction. All right, but before we actually plug this thing in, why don't we see what kind of charge status we're currently at? Here is our multimeter. Let's go ahead and switch that over to 20, uh, 20 volts. We're trying to have a look, take a, just take a look at the voltage on this thing. It's a 3.7 volt nominal battery, meaning that we should see a reading of around, yep, 3.37 when it's flat. So that's okay. This will go anywhere from like 2.9 to 3.37 when it's dead. The fully charged, it should sit somewhere around 4 to 4.1 volts. Maybe you can get it all the way up to 4.2 if, if you're feeling extra lucky. Here we go. Let's plug the power in and we'll see the light will turn on. With this particular circuit, when plugged in, it will charge, uh, it will display a red LED, that means charging. Blue LED means it is charged. Uh, we can actually, hold ahead, let's, let's actually pop this out again and take a quick look at the, uh, the voltage increasing. So the battery, the charging circuit will charge very quickly at first and then it will sort of slow down and slowly bring it up to its final charging voltage. 
just make sure we can actually see that. And in just under a minute, we're already at 3.6 volts. As you can see, the circuit works very quickly. And honestly, you only need to charge these things up to about 70% for them to actually function uh, in the vape. But I would recommend going all the way just so that you don't have to do this as often. And here's one that I prepared earlier. Let's take a look at where the voltage is on this thing. It should have charged up by now. It's been going for about an hour. That's typically how long it seems to take these things to get charged up. I wanted it around 3.9 volts for this demonstration. And yep, there we go, Three, I'll take four. Four is all, it's probably about 90% charged, I'd wager. We can take our freshly refurbished reservoir, attach the ending back in just like this. Voila. Oh, whoopsie, popped off the top. Sorry for the change in angle there, my cat ran in and bumped the camera. Uh, by the way, if you ever drop these things, make sure you don't get any like hair and other contaminants in the top. It's pretty gross. You don't want really where you want that in your vape. All right, so there is our newly refurbished one. This is a charged battery. It's not the same battery that was in the other vape, but that's good enough. It's the same model. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and put this back in any one of the housings. It, again, it, at this point, it doesn't really matter. The, the vape flavor on the outside no longer reflects reality. There we go. And if we push that thing back inside, ugh, a once completely dead vape, we saw the battery was flat. We saw the juice was empty. We can go ahead and draw on this. And yes, indeed, it does produce vapor. We have successfully refurbished this thing. We've probably given it, oh, I don't know, 800, 900 pulls. It's never gonna be as good as manufactured, but it's gonna be pretty good either way. And for what functionally takes maybe three and a half minutes work, it's really worth doing. So now that we've got this one working, I want to show you that you don't need to have this exact shape, model, make, brand, whatever, in order to make it work. No, in fact, we can bring out today's previous contestants and uh, have a look if we can do the same with them. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, these are functionally identical internally. And so if we pop them open in much the same way as before, oh, that one's cap just came right off. Let's clear this out. We're gonna very gently pull on the batteries. This one has not been opened before. There we go. And as you can see, the internals are pretty much identical. We have a filter to catch any un unvaporized juice, a reservoir with a couple of plugs, uh, inside this one, we've got a little uh, element. I'm not going to pull it out because I know that this model has they use like copper flaps rather than uh, copper wick, so that it's, it's kind of hard to put them back together. We have a much bigger battery. It's almost triple the capacity with a uh, with an airflow sensor attached to this little rubber pad instead of attached directly to the base plate, but it is still attached to the base. This is identical so electronically. Like the circuit diagram for this is identical to the other one. Let's take a look at our rectangular friend here and see how that does. Popping that open gently again. These rectangular ones are a little harder to get out. They've got a much wider surface area to pull on. And unfortunately, the reservoir appears to have stayed behind this time, but that's okay. As you can see, same thing again. Reservoir with the foam, element, battery, uh, airflow sensor. It's, it's the same thing inside. And uh, just to really demonstrate the point here, let's pull out this one there we go. And again, just very gently pull on those wires and place it over there. Look at that. Identical. They are it's not even just that they look the same. They are the same. It is an airflow sensor, a battery, an element, a reservoir, a filter, a body. And there you have it. Disposable vapes don't need to be disposed. With a little bit of effort and a very small upfront cost in this case, you can refurbish pretty much anything. If you guys enjoyed the video, please do like it and share it with your friends, especially the ones who use these things very often. It might help save a few more of these batteries from ending up in landfills. If you guys do decide to do something with this project, let me know in the comments. I'd love to answer your questions and hear your thoughts. Again, I'm a hobbyist. Everything I talked about here is self-taught. So if I've made any safety mistakes, please tell me, list them out. I'll try and put them in a pinned comment. And uh, as always, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. And of course, a huge thank you to our channel members and patrons for the month, Couch Potato, The Senate, Kelly Ananas, Call Me Bo 82 Riley David, LCG Canyon Sahar, Knee Cruncher, Old Man Tater, Freakin' Friendly Beaver, Not Gay Arthur, Cut Beef Go Ham, Jack Smallman, Rivo, Adachi, I'm Alpha, Alan Oselaher, Charlie Weber, Mermix, Mel Roman, and Officer C4. You guys rock.